For Comedy Hype News, I'm Dom Smith. When Eddie Murphy made his debut on Saturday Night Live, he saved the show from cancellation. The show's original creator, Lorne Michaels, left the show along with all of its original cast. Eddie's rise to the top was instantaneous, immediately capturing audiences and giving a jolt of life to the declining sketch comedy show. Eddie was the main draw and franchise player while he was a cast member on SNL. Gumby, Stevie Wonder, James Brown Celebrity Hot Tubs, Velvet Jones, sketches like White Like Me, the list goes on. Eddie was so popular, he was the first person to host SNL while still a cast member. At the end of the cold open, Murphy announced, live from New York, it's the Eddie Murphy Show. And that statement couldn't have been more accurate. Just like Michael Jordan on the Bulls, you watched the show, but Eddie was the one you really wanted to see. Eddie Murphy was untouchable in the early to mid 80s. Everything he did was a success. My pictures make their money back. No matter how I feel, for instance, about The Golden Child, which was a piece of shit, the movie made more than 100 million. So who am I to say it sucks? Eddie Murphy has appeared in over 40 films in his career and not all of them are hits. Murphy himself has recognized that going on record saying that the golden child was a piece of shit and he only knows a few people that saw Pluto Nash. We all know that Eddie is one of the greatest actors of all time and he's an amazing comedian. He's got a string of hits and some not so great hits. So we here at Comedy Hype decided to take a look at some of Eddie Murphy's worst movies. Now these are movies even Eddie Murphy wishes he passed on. Here's some of the movies that Eddie Murphy shouldn't have done. First, we've got Holy Man. The movie follows Eddie playing a unique character named G. His character decides to help a group of salespeople who work for a home shopping channel. Holy Man is considered a box office failure, only making 12 million when it costs 60 million to make. This, along with the horrible reviews, is why it's considered one of Eddie Murphy's worst movies. Even Eddie himself said this when he did an interview on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon back in November 2011. I did this horrendous film one time James Brown made a cameo in called Holy Man. It wasn't that bad, but it was pretty bad. Next on our list is 1997's Metro. Metro cost 55 million, but only made 32 at the box office. In the movie, Murphy plays a hostage negotiator for the San Francisco Police Department. His former partner is killed by a jewel thief Murphy puts the thief in jail, but when he escapes, he goes after Murphy's girlfriend. At the same time, he's assigned to train a rookie cop played by Michael Rappaport. When the movie was released over Martin Luther King Day weekend, it received negative reviews, with many saying Eddie Murphy didn't show us anything new. Metro was the first movie Murphy made after The Nutty Professor. One critic from the New York Times said, Metro brought him back to the rut of mediocre films he was making before. 2002 might be the worst year of Eddie Murphy's career because he released three movies that underperformed at the box office. Showtime, I Spy, and the infamous Adventures of Pluto Nash all failed to get more than 25% on Rotten Tomatoes. Showtime teams Murphy up with acting legend Robert De Niro. The two play LAPD cops forced to work together when movie producers film an investigation for a new reality show. Filmed on an $85 million budget, the film only took in 77 making it a loss for the studio. I Spy received a similar reception. Based on the 1965 show that starred Robert Culp and Bill Cosby, I Spy stars Murphy and Owen Wilson. They play two spies with opposite personalities, forced to work together to stop an armed dealer. It was another Eddie Murphy movie critics felt that they had seen before. Two polar opposites, Eddie playing the cocky, wisecracking partner against the more serious and by-the-book character. The chemistry between Eddie and Owen was praised, but the predictability of the script and story were criticized, as well as the movie's failure to recapture the tone of the original show. The Adventures of Pluto Nash was released in August 2002 and is considered one of the biggest box office bombs in movie history. The movie cost $100 million to make, but only took in seven at the box office. This resulted in a $93 million loss for Warner Brothers. Critics had nothing good to say about it as the movie was trashed when it was released. An underdeveloped script, badly directed scenes, a cast that was given nothing to work with, and the lack of chemistry between Murphy and Rosario Dawson were the complaints. After filming, the movie sat on the shelves for nearly two years. The studio claimed that visual effects were the reason for the delay, but it's clear that the studio wasn't confident in the movie from the get-go. Murphy also did very little press leading up to the movie. 
The Golden Raspberry Awards is an award show that celebrates the worst movies of the year. In 2003, Eddie Murphy was nominated for Worst Actor for all three movies he released the previous year. He was also nominated with Robert De Niro and Owen Wilson for Worst Screen Couple. Pluto Nash was also nominated for Worst Picture, Worst Director, and Worst Screenplay. The 2000s saw Eddie move away from the buddy cop movies he did in the 80s and 90s, and he moved in the direction of more family-oriented films like Shrek, Daddy Daycare, and The Haunted Mansion. Eddie Murphy calls the next movie on our list one of the worst movies he's ever made. In Meet Dave, Eddie played a spaceship that looked like a human. The spaceship would also be controlled by aliens who also looked like humans and operated inside the body of the spaceship. Meet Dave was made for 60 million but only took in 50 at the box office. With a 20% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and nominations for Worst Actor and Worst Screen Couple, it's safe to say that Meet Dave wasn't well received. Even Murphy himself said, Pluto Nash, that breaks me down. That breaks me all the way down. Then I put on Meet Dave, that tears me apart. Then if I really wanna cry, I'll put on Imagine That. In Imagine That, Eddie plays a financial advisor at a securities firm. When someone else is hired and threatens to take the top spot as the account manager, Eddie must find a new way to stand out. Soon he discovers that his daughter is able to tell the future in the financial world by using her blanket and imaginary friends. Imagine That is another Eddie Murphy film that suffered a loss at the box office, losing 32 million and suffering from mediocre reviews. In November 2011, Murphy participated in a Rolling Stone interview and was asked how a younger Eddie Murphy would respond to all of the family-friendly movies. Would the 27-year-old have wondered what I was doing in Dr. Doolittle? No. Or in those Shrek movies? No. But you know, both the 27-year-old and the 48-year-old was like, why am I in Imagine That? That movie didn't have a chance at the box office. It's just me, this little girl, and a blanket. Murphy received a Worst Actor nomination for this film, too. A Thousand Words is the worst-reviewed movie of Eddie Murphy's career, something that people didn't even think was possible after Pluto Nash. It currently has a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes and got Eddie Murphy yet another nomination for Worst Actor. A Thousand Words was filmed in 2008 and scheduled for release in 2009, but it was delayed due to the split between DreamWorks and Paramount. It was then scheduled for a 2011 release, but was delayed once again to 2012. In a Rolling Stone interview, Eddie admitted that he did a lot of bad movies just for the money, although he doesn't do it as much in this stage in his career. I don't whore myself out as easily as I used to. I don't think about money, but I am still from Brooklyn. So in a couple of months, you'll see me at a press conference saying, yes, we're doing Holy Man too." It's great to see that even Eddie Murphy himself can recognize that he's got a few bombs on his resume, but it doesn't erase the dozens of classic films he has been a part of. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel and follow Comedy Hype across all social media. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Dom Smith.